Hey everyone, Mario with JDM Fitness here, and today I'm going to be bringing to you guys a, um, I guess you'd call it a uh, educational series, and the need for why we do such things within the fitness industry. You know, we have certain terms as such as, uh, oh bro, you have to uh, apply progressive overload to everything you do, and the thing with that is that no one tends to really question it because they just assume it to be fact. And um, I know Lane Norton, Lane Norton said this, but uh, one of the most important questions you can ask is why. So um, I'd like to kind of give you that you know, reasoning, the why, as to why do we apply progressive overload. So just before we go into um, gas, um, sorry, I'm a little kind of post-recovery here. <clears throat> Hans Seile, um, sorry if I butchered the name wrong, was a Hungarian endocrinologist, and he was largely responsible for kind of essentially determining how organisms and microorganisms respond to biological stress and um, external stressors in this case, but essentially um, his theory came out in I believe it was 1936. So at the time, he wasn't really aware of many glucocorticoids, many other things that pertain to external stressors or internal stressors. So um, for, the re for the purpose of this um, little lecture, I'm just going to um, largely leave it to exercise. So um, first off we have gas and what this is it's a theory that he proposed which states um, essentially we us humans have three stages of how we react to biological stressors or in this case like I said um, exercise being our ex external stressor. So um, these are the three stages first we have stage one being alarm and shock Stage two being adaptation, and stage three being exhaustion and overtraining. And essentially, Siley proposed um, the following ways. And for the, like I said, for the reasoning that this is mostly pertaining to exercise, um, you guys are actually going to enjoy this as much as I am. So stage one, he referred to as the alarm shock phase. And what that means is that, uh, as many of you know, um, typically post-training, there's an immediate shock there is an immediate um, disruption in homeostasis and uh, hormonal equilibrium that essentially will aid itself and recover in time. So um, there's an immediate shock and what he noticed with uh, his individual, I believe it was his human subjects at the time, also with um, various organisms, was that um, there was a, um, what is it, a disruption within a muscle, muscle uh, mus muscularity tone, sorry I was trying to find the word that he used, and essentially now what he referred to, or what we refer to as muscular tone, is DOMS. So essentially that just achy feeling of your, uh, your tendons, an achy feeling of your muscle post-training the day following. So this lasted up to 48 hours within um, Siley's proposed um, theory. And um, if you guys can see on the bottom, I have novice, intermediate, advanced. So um, what this means is that, yes, all trainees, you know, whether you're an, a novice or you're advanced or intermediate, you will respond to this, but you'll respond to it very differently. So with a novice, um, typically what individuals have noticed was that individuals that were novice trainees were able to recover much more rapidly, you know, even up to 24 hours. That's why they were ready to train the next day with really not much DOMS. But as you slowly start building up your way into, let's say, the advanced, it's much more harder and it takes much more effort to actually induce this stage one alarm shock into your trainees. So just that's kind of giving you some background right now. Stage two is our adaptation and what Siley referred to that as was uh, a modification of gene activity and increased production of uh, relevant hormones pertaining to training. So for the purpose of this, um, I'm sure you guys already know exactly which hormones I'm talking about. So um, again, I just want to quickly not go too much into detail and talk about the bottom stuff here. And um, I have adaptation depends, and it depends on many variable factors, but I kind of want to keep it to the main ones that we're going to be talking about. Work tolerance of the individual and recovery capability of the individual. And um, essentially by work tolerance, it means how much work can essentially this individual trainee be exposed to. And uh, again, I'm, this might touch into the overtraining, so I won't do that right now, but uh, recovery capability on the individual is going to vary, and this will vary greatly depending on if you are in a surplus or, you're in a, or if you're in a deficit. So um, 
you will recover. It, it's just the time that it might take you to recover might be hampered a bit. And essentially what we're seeking to do is that, remember the stage one that we were just talking about? We're seeking to super compensate, meaning that once we adapt to the given stress, we should be able to exceed the amount that we were able to um, previously do, or therefore super compensate. And usually super compensation occurs after adaptation. So if you were pressing, let's say, 50 pounds for five reps, and now you can press 50 pounds for six reps, you've technically super compensated according to uh, Hans uh, or Siley's theory. And stage three is referred to as exhaustion and overtraining. Um, essentially what this refer boils down to is um, excessive stress, excessive metabolic stress, ex excessive muscu uh, muscu oh my God, muscular stress, performance decrease. And um, essentially, the, as you refer to it, the adaptative capacity is overwhelmed. Therefore, adaptation can't necessarily occur. And um, again, I know many people are going to say, well, bro, overtraining doesn't exist. It's not real. But uh, it's, it's real. It's just many of us, I guess you could say, don't tend to push our training that far unless we're complete morons. You, you need recovery in your program. So, you know, I'm actually going to write out the um, three stages that, or three um, ways that we'd like training to be ideal within the fitness industry and what you as a gym trainee should be, should find ideal for yourself. And so, um, essentially, I'm reading the book right now, Practical Programming, and essentially, um, they use a model that is um, relatively similar to what Hans Seiley proposed and how do we apply this to our fitness goals. And um, essentially, there's three graphs, there are three little charts actually in one uh, table. So there's one table, middle table, end table, and uh, these pertain to stress. So right here we have too little stress, which results in no disruption in homeostasis. homeostasis. No adaptations can be made since we're using relatively the same weight, the same repetition. So essentially, there will be no change in performance. The middle one is ideally the one that we want to see with anyone's fitness goals, whether that's to gain lean mass, um, well, that's pretty much everyone's goal, but or a change in performance, you know, increase on your uh, one rep max, um, increase in your vertical jump, you know, whatever it may be. So what essentially what you have to do is you have to provide the appropriate stress to result in disruption of homeostasis, which therefore induces stage one, stage one of Hans, uh, Hans Seiley, which is the alarm shock phase. Therefore, we can essentially receive these favorable adaptations to our training. Again, therefore, to supercompensate, and finally, we receive a performance gain. And then, final is the um, overtraining model, which was uh, too much stress, a disruption of homeostasis. Um, the adapt oh my God, adaptative capacity is overwhelmed, and there is a performance loss. So um, again. When you're thinking of um, how should I set up my program, think to yourself, okay, well, looking back at Hans Seiley's rule, if I'm looking to actually induce a uh, alarm shock phase and therefore adapt to it, I should be relatively periodically increasing weights, repetitions, and or sets on my main lifts to allow for this adaptation to occur. So I'm just giving you guys an idea or an insight as to how I program my training so, um, you know, hopefully this has helped you, you know, um, I'm sorry, I kind of hate to rant on here, but uh, I'd like to give credit where it's due, and I'd like to at least provide some information or knowledge on the uh, topic beforehand, rather than just take a bunch of articles and then present them as my own, which is uh, what quite, quite too many uh, YouTubers do nowadays, which really irritates the shit out of me, to be honest. But um, I'll leave it at here before I really go into the topic. So, um, you know, please check out the JDM Fitness page. If you guys are enjoying these little uh, informative, educational little series, I guess you could say for now, you know, please do let me know. Um, I'm trying to get more comfortable with the camera. I actually just purchased the new one. I believe it's a Canon something something HD. I don't know. Hopefully the quality comes out nice. So um, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Go on the Facebook because uh, personally I'm more active on that as opposed to the YouTube. So um, thank you guys again. Take care.